Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we are, oh dear, now is that stay. Seek the way pilgrims try, Christians away. My Jesus is, Jesus is coming soon, morning or morning night or noon. noon. Many will Many meet, will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound, and all of the all dead shall rise. Righteous meet. Thanks for sharing your time with us today. And, you know, I think you're going to really enjoy this program if you just stay with us a few minutes. I think you're going to enjoy this because our guest today is a fellow that I met just um, two days ago. Never had crossed paths with him before. His name is uh, Leroy Washington. Now, Mr. Washington, we're glad to have you here on the set. Glad to be here, Mr. Lyle. Now, as I understand, you call me Lyle, brother, because everybody calls me Lyle. Little kids call me Lyle. Now, you and I met with a mutual friend. I yes. know her, you know her, and, yes. and uh, she introduced us to each other. Yes. And I was just sitting and listening to you talk, and I thought, I want to invite you to do a television show. You've never done a television interview before, I saw. No, sir. Okay. It's going to go good. I just want you to relax. And what I really want to do now, uh, uh, now your street name is Shockey, right? Shocker. 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 Well, I'm going to try to call you Lee or Leroy or Mr. Washington, okay? Uh -huh. Okay. But I may call you Shocker in a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to try not to. Okay. Anyway, here's what we get because I don't do what I try to do sometimes. I want to get your heart out here where mamas, because I've got mamas watching this program that are left alone with a whole house full of kids. Yes. And they feel deserted. They are deserted. They're in over the head. They don't know what to do. And, and sometimes the children just take over and run the house. And you've had a lifetime experience of making wrong decisions and paying a price for it. Yes, I have. You have pulled 50 years incarcerated, as yes, I understand. I have. Yes, I have. See, now that's a lifetime. That's a lifetime. When, when I was 21 year old, I didn't know whether I'd live 50 years or not. You know, and that, that is a real lifetime. And has your time been pulled here in Tennessee? For the most part. For yes, the most sir. part. Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Johnson City, Tennessee. I was born there in uh, July 11th, 1956. 1956. Yes, sir. You're still a young man. Yeah, I'm still a young man. <laughs> When the, how, well, tell me about your home life growing up. Mom and dad at home with you? Yes, for the most part. Okay. You have no complaints about home life? Yes, I had, yeah, I had some complaints, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Can you share some of those with well, us? Well, my, 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 my father was a chronic alcoholic. Oh, okay. And, 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 my, and my mother was too. So it caused a lot of chaos in the family. Now, if I ask you something you don't feel comfortable answering, you just say, I don't want to talk about that, okay? Oh, I will. We'll go on to something else. I, I, I do this all the time. There's no big problem. Okay. So how did their uh, behavior affect you? What, what? Talk about that for me. Well, uh, actually, I didn't get a lot of uh, love from my parents because they were young. They was always doing, and I was the youngest of the siblings at the time. How many brothers and sisters you got? Well, I got five brothers and, and, and uh, three sisters, but I got four siblings older than me and three younger than me. It's nine of us. Okay. So I was... You was in the middle of the pack. I was in the middle of the pack. So I didn't get a lot of nourishment, a lot of attention, and I didn't get a lot of direction. Did you feel like in those days, because I see this a lot, and how somebody give you attention meant a lot to you, didn't it? For somebody to give you attention. Yes. Is what I'm saying. Because I felt loved. My volunteers and my workers who work with me, and we work with children who are in the situation you were growing up in, uh, we need to be real sensitive about not saying negative things to them, but trying to find positive things, right. don't we? Right, right, right. It, you, was, was there an outsider that, uh, <clears throat> that gave you attention that you, can you remember one, a person who made a big impact on your life at all? Well, I had, I had, I had three brothers older than me. And my brother that was born before me, his name is Freddie, he, we was, he was my support. Mm -hmm. I tried to emulate him and mimic him. And sometimes uh, he did things that I didn't think was, was right, but I, I, you know, he was you my hero, anyway. you right. know, cause he was, you know, I was close to him. How did you do in school? Oh, I fired well. I did pretty good. I made a few D's and a couple of F's and stuff, but I, I fired good in school. Did you enjoy going to school? I love school. Did you? Yeah, I'm finna go back to school here in 
through weeks. Are you? Yes. What are you going to try to do? What are you going to try to study? I want to study archaeology. Archaeology? Yeah. You're into that, huh? Yeah, I love it. That, that's great. That is great. Yeah, I love archaeology. Um, when you, how old were you when you were incarcerated for the first time? Well, because of uh, the hardships of my family and my parents being chronic alcoholics and we were being moved around and was, you know, wasn't going to school and stuff. And I was, I was six, so I was in the first grade. So the, uh, uh, the state came in and took custody of us and separated us and put me in a foster home. Oh, ooh, Me and two ooh. of my brothers. In the same foster home? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. How did the foster, because I'm a foster home parent and I hadn't always done it right. You know, well, I look back and I think, boy, I wish I'd have done that differently. I wish I'd have done that differently. Um, you know, if what is, talk about that. How did that, how did you feel when you left mom and daddy and went to the foster home? I felt abandoned. I felt, uh, because they wasn't going to take me at first. I wanted to be with my brothers and I wanted to be with my brother Freddie because he was my best friend. So I mm -hmm. didn't want to be separated from him. They was going to leave me with my parents, but I wanted to be with my brother, so they took me too. Mm -hmm. And then after they took me, uh, I was young, and I didn't comprehend it then because I was still a, somewhat of a kid, you know, mm -hmm. a baby, a toddler. But uh, it, it hurt a lot when I got separated from my parents. How long were you in that particular foster home? Uh, Did you move from foster home to foster home? I got one guy that went through 15 foster homes. Uh, how many foster homes were you I in? I went through that one. That's that one? Yeah, and then I went to TPS, Tennessee Preparatory School. So you went from the foster home to, when you went to TPS, how, how old were you then? I was uh, eight. Eight year old? I was eight years old. Then they didn't set a pattern that you was uh, going to be a little bit uh, difficult to deal with. <laughs> yeah, with. yes. A lot of anger in you, wasn't you? Well, I wasn't necessarily angry because I didn't, I, I wasn't experienced, ang I, I was experiencing not anger, but a lot of anxiety. Really? And a lot of stress from being from my parents. I wasn't nothing but eight years old as a kid. And then I was the baby. I was the youngest sibling, so. What would you say to a parent that's watching us today and they're under a lot of stress in their life and they have resorted to going to alcohol to help try to steady their nerves and so forth and they've turned themselves into an alcoholic but they got little children around them. What would you say to those parents? I would say to those parents to uh, pray first first and foremost pray to God and uh, try to work that out personally but uh, I wasn't I, I wouldn't want uh, add us to uh, parents to expose uh, their drinking or their drugs to their kids protect their kids from that their, their kids need to be their kids they are worth the sacrifice of giving up drugs, giving up alcohol. Right, they worth that sacrifice. That is. You brought them into the world, so you're supposed to be their first teacher, their first educator. Uh, you're supposed to shelter from from the, all those the, bad things going all on around. Bad things. You got to protect your society. children. That's right. And you have to direct them, emphasize education, and try to instill mannerism and elegance in them while they're young. And respect uh, when they get into school, respect the teachers, even though they get on your nerves. Respect the teachers. See, see my, one of my daughters, uh, she would get in trouble at school, and I'd go to school with her and try to stand up for her, and then not only she get thrown out, they'd throw me out. So, you know, it's yeah. a, there's a better way to do it than what I said. There's a better way to do it than what I did. But you've got to, parents need to really wrap their arms around their kids, don't you? Yes, they do. Yes, always. They do. I tell my parents to always uh, to tell people, Persuade your children that you love your children. That's right. Persuade them. You have to spend quality time with your children. You have to take time from yourself to spend it with your children and talk to them. You know, and be a parent instead of being a friend. Yeah. Friend is secondary. Yeah. You know, you have to tell them, well, you know, little Johnny, you can't do this today because uh, I told you to take out the trash. You wouldn't take out the trash, so you know it's time out today. You know, you don't go over your friend house. You know, you got the discipline. And he you ain't going to appreciate that, is he? No, but he might not do it again either. <laughs> that's right. But if he doesn't know or she doesn't know, then, you know, that's up to the parent. It's, it, it all relies with the parents, you know. Uh, doing things with your kids, socializing with your kids, uh, being interested in their sports activities, encouraging school, making that first and foremost because, uh, in today's society, you have to you have to have a good education just to obtain right. a good job. That's right. I had an old man, elder, 
not an old man, he was a young man when he told me this. He's still living, doing fine. And he told me this one time. He said, you don't say bad things or you don't tell bad things on people that you really love. That's right. You, and that's what the Bible says, you know, love always protects. That's right. And, and I've noticed in some of my parents, and we use a the phrase, they don't have parenting skills. And they'll say all the bad things about their children. And I, I encourage them to only say good things about their children. Because when I have one of the children that comes and rides our buses, come to Bible class, and the little rascal just terror. I mean, you know, he can't do anything with him. He talks back to me like I was a six-year-old, you know. Yeah. And I go to the house, see Mama. And I've noticed it. I've done it everywhere in the world. But when I walk in and Mama's there and he sees me, he says, I'm in trouble. You know, he, he's sweating bullets already. He yeah. goes, because Mama doesn't have the best of skills when it comes to punishing him, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I walk in and I say, I just want to come by and just thank you for letting this child, his name, let's say his name's Bill, letting Bill ride our buses. Mm -hmm. He's such a good child. And, and so we're proud to have him. We're proud to have him in our program. He's smart. He's a good kid. We just want you to continue to let him come. I'm real proud of him. You look over that kid and he's sitting over there. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> I got a friend for life. Yeah. Then when he comes back in, I have to say, I can say something to him and he's saying, okay, okay. He, you know, you win him over on those things. Yeah. And, uh, but good news is good news. Good news is good news. And I noticed that watching children and watching parents, um, uh, children, you said it a while ago, they don't need a friend, they need a they parent. They need a parent first. They need a parent. And then they need a friend. And, and then they get their friends. And, and, and I, I think that is, I think that's so precious. Um, what was you, I want to ask you this question, you don't have to answer it. What were you incarcerated for? Uh, second degree murder. Second degree. And while you're in, you, and we're going to get back to some of this stuff by talking to parents. Before I leave, and we've got about 12, 13 more minutes. I want you to just talk about giving parents advice to help their children not vo not get involved in the system. In other words, like what you said a while ago, I want to say more of that. Go on to school, make your grades, work with the school. I won't, we don't talk about some of that. Okay. While you're incarcerated, did you meet any famous um, people incarcerated? Uh, yeah, I met James L. Ray, and I met. Uh, that was at Brushing Mountain. I was in Brushing Mountain in 1976. Was you up there when he escaped? Yeah, I was up there when he was skating. I was uh, working out for a boxing match in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. They used to take the boxing team out. You did some boxing? Box. Yeah. Well, I thought you kind of looked like you might knock me around a little bit. No, nah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not about it. I'm not about it. You enjoy boxing? Well, when I was younger, I did. Yeah. I tried to stay active now at my old age. Uh, and you, you met old James Earl? Yeah, I like James Earl. We was next door neighbors. Really? Yeah. We sell, he sailed in uh, two on four, and I sailed in. Four on four. I sell the cell opposite him. What kind of conversations did y'all have? Mostly he just typed all the time. He really? typed, wrote his books and stuff, you know what I'm saying? He did, he wasn't a very talkative man, you know. He would speak to me because I was his neighbor. You yeah, know, yeah. So. What did you, what are the lessons you learned from being incarcerated? Is that a fair question? Well, yes, yes. I learned the significance of my freedom and the value, Boy, that's important, of, and the value of life. And I learned to uh, have more compassion for my fellow human being. Boy, that's good. Hmm. Let me write that down. More compassion. We, we judge people harshly, don't we? We do. Sometimes we do. We, we judge people because of their past. We don't, we don't uh, allow the past to be the past and take that individual or that person or that party for, and where, for, they what begin, for where they begin now, what they're doing now. See. Lee, I see people that don't speak to each other for 10 years because one of them said something. They thought one of them said something about them 10 years ago, and they won't let it go. They just keep hanging on to it, hanging on to it, hanging on, and it builds, 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 gets worse, worse, worse. And, uh, and it just really destroys the quality of life when they could be, I see family, I see close families, I see brothers and sisters that can't get along with each other because somebody said something, didn't like somebody's pie, cooked the apple pie and carried it to dinner, and they didn't like my pie, I ain't gonna have nothing to do with it, blah, 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 but you know, we just act like little children, don't we? Well, you know what the scripture said. God said in order for us to get mercy, you have to give mercy. Mm -hmm. You have to forgive and forget. And we have the authority and the power to do that. We have. We have the authority and the power to forgive. 
And, and people don't, uh, sometimes I think we just take comfort in trying to, all that drama, trying to hold on to that drama, and we think it makes us look better when really it just shows who we really are. It, it makes us, it's, we don't get anything out of that except more hurt and pain. And you learn to not judge other people while you were incarcerated. Now, did yeah. you pull all 50 years off one sentence? I did two sentences. Two sentences. And uh, how long a time was you out between the sentences? Uh, one time for about 17 months. 17 months? That's and then good. one time 16 days. 16 days. 16 days. Can you imagine? I got out of prison and was back in prison uh, 16 days, and it was a reality shock, believe me. It was a reality shock. And I realized at that time my significance, the significance of my freedom and the value of the gift of life that God gave me. and. Uh, in 1990, I was uh, I had caught I had caught a federal charge for 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 arms okay. for weapons, okay. and they gave me 20 years. Mm. And uh, uh, that evening, when I was in a Greenville jail in Greenville, Greenville, Tennessee, I prayed to God and rededicated my life to Jesus at mm -hmm. that time. And I've been trying to do the right thing ever since. I've been trying to live upright before God and man. See, I had one old boy. And he was a drug dealer here in town. And um, he had a, you know, he's one of those guys that wanted to come and live with me. And for some reason or other, we just never did take him in. And he's a good kid, but he's a big time drug dealer and so on and so forth. So he, my wife asked me, I don't go to court and testify for drug dealers. I just told him, I'll look, hey fellas, I'll teach you about Jesus. I'll minister to you. I'll help you every way I can, but I'm not gonna come downtown and testify for you. If you get, if you're gonna go that route, you're on your own. My wife, he had asked several times to come and live with us. His sister had lived with us. And so I went and my wife asked me, said, what are you going to do when he gets arrested for selling drugs? What are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go down and testify. To him. Don't tell the judge about his background. And so I went in and I did. I told the judge and the judge was nice to me. They listened to me and, and probably helped him a little bit. Well, he went in. The judge told him, said, you're going to jail today. They gave him a year, which I thought was real light, you know, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Calling every little bit, wanting shoes, wanting this, wanting that. Calling his sister, just wanting, wanting, wanting. Got out and stayed out just a few days and got picked up. And he had a bottle in the front seat and had a joint, uh, end of a joint, butt of a joint was in that bottle. And the officer picked him up, violation, went back in for another year. Mm -hmm. And he didn't call for anything. And he told me what you said there when he prayed and rededicated his life. He said, I was in, I was out, I made a stupid decision, and he said, it's nobody's fault but my own. That young man grew up. He has been out for years, has a real good job, working, doing good, productive citizen, That's happy. Great. Every time you see him, he's smiling, happy, he comes That's down, drives buses for us sometimes, because he said, hey, I'm, I gotta make, be responsible for my behavior. And he accepted up, and that, that's what young people need to hear. They need to be that they are responsible for their behavior. They're responsible for their actions. And you can look at your life and blame everybody in the world. You can blame your parents, you can blame alcohol, you can blame your brothers, you can blame the community around that's you. That's right. Which don't help you a bit until you, you have to blame self. You have that's to take, right. Take responsibility. That's, take responsibility of the choices that you make and the decisions that you render in life. And you think those things through and pray about them, don't you? Absolutely. Jesus let God is the be way. involved. Jesus God, is the way. Yeah, let God be involved. Let God be involved in your life. Now, that's boy, that's right. a powerful statement. Yeah, we can't, we can't well, do nothing powerful. without him. I didn't make it through prison all them years without God. Uh -huh. I didn't do it because I was muscular. Uh -huh. I had these rugged, handsome looks. <laughs> I did it because I knew God. Well, good looks didn't take you through that, no. did <laughs> Jesus got, sustained me. Uh, I got one guy that was in, and uh, I interviewed him, and he pulled uh, 25 years. And uh, he came out of a criminal family, and uh, and he did the same thing we we're just talking about. He'd been in there for a long time, and his grandmother would always tell him, "You're a good boy, you are a good person, you're a good person." Yeah. And man, he was running all the wrong deals, making all the wrong deals, stole his first car when he was nine years old, you know, doing all this good stuff. And uh, he said he was sitting there, and he thought, you know, some some religious worker came by and said something to him, and he blowed him off, you know. And you know, you know, my grandmother said I was a good person. And why don't I just try to be the good person instead of the bad person? That's right. So he, next time a worker came by, he started talking to him. They got him a Bible. He started studying. 
He is very religious. He is out of prison. Got him a good job, starting his own company. That's good. Making good money and is happy. And every time I see him, I went to lunch with him the other day. He bought my lunch. I tell you what, the guy is grinning from the time he walks through <laughs> the door till he leaves. Yeah. He's happy. That's good. And uh, But he's happy of who he is. Yeah. And that's something parents need to teach our children. That's right. You are who you are. That's right. You have to encourage your children and nurture them, talk to them. Uh, you have and to listen uh, to them. Listen to them. Yeah, you have to listen to them because a lot of them uh, uh, are thriving for attention. A lot of youth is, is thriving for attention. And they'll do something bad to get attention if we don't. That's right. Give them credit they'll act out. Good they'll good. act out. They'll act out. I was with, uh, I have a, a little girl and she's 10 now, but when she was six, she was in the first grade, I think, and they had a, they had a, her mother let you live with me, and, and they had a school thing and where they was all performing. Now, this kid is good. I mean, this kid can sing. She can, she can do the Whitney Houston thing. She's 10 years old. This kid's good. Mm -hmm. But she was on the stage, and there was all these little first graders of her singing, you know, and that's not the environment that I'm comfortable in, you know. You got all these little kids. I scare kids when I walk in. When you're ugly as I am, they, ooh, you know, it scares <laughs> them. And she was in the center of the thing, and boy, when they started the singing and got a little moves, she started started pushing the kids away from her a little bit, and she started doing little moves, you know. And her mother was sitting with me, and her mother made eye contact with her. And her mother just said, go, girl, go. <laughs> go, girl. Yeah. And that meant more to that child That's right. than everything that I had done when her mother said, go, girl, go. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it was great. And I just sat there and really cried and watching her sing and, and just be so relaxed in that atmosphere and do that. And for a six-year-old, that was a beautiful sight. Yeah. And uh, a lot of parents don't get to see that. Mm -hmm. they, they don't get to... If they're if they're grounded in their alcohol and they're grounded in their anger, all work. Yeah, you can overwork and annoy your yeah. ignore your and children. Ignore your you? children. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to spend time with your children. Time is so important. Yeah, it's of the essence. And we get to thinking that we don't have much time, and God gave us time. Mm -hmm. He created time for us. He don't need it. He's outside time. That's Think about right. that. Uh, he, he created is. time for he us. Is. That's mm -hmm. right. He created time for us. We got about eight minutes to go. Talk to me about what you would like for every young boy and girl in Nashville to know. Not to do and to do. Well. Is the, that a fair question? It is. The youth shouldn't get involved in drugs, narcotics, smoking herb, doing anything over excessive that's going to lead to uh, mishap, incarceration, or death. Uh, I think parents should spend more time with their children, talk to their children, be a parent instead of being a friend. Be a parent first and friendship comes secondary. Stress education because it's, it's, uh, it's, the, essence, it's the essence of things in this society. Uh, contact the school. Check contact on the school. school. Participate with your children in their don't, uh, school. Don't go to school and beat the teacher up. Go to don't go to school and beat the teacher up. Uh -huh. Go focus on your, your lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, encourage children. You don't when your child do something wrong. Don't tell your child that you're a stupid little jerk. Yeah, yeah. You know, you tell them, Johnny, you need to do that a different way. That's Give right. them wise counsel and instruction, as it says in the scripture. And it says even a fool is to wise counsel and instruction. Uh -huh. But uh, our kids are our future. That's right. And the more educated the children are, the most, uh, the more the society is honored. And respect it. And, and, the, and they're going to be happy if they keep the and Lord gonna, in their life. They're going to be happy. The most definitely got to have the Lord. God is never going to give us bad advice. Never. And we don't, we allow the devil to trick us not to trust God. That's but right. The scripture says everything that good comes from God. Everything good comes from God. And so we don't need to shut the Lord out. Never. And, and, and it can really bless us. Never. Do you have contact with your brothers and sisters now? I call them periodically. Do they? Mm -hmm. Are they proud of your life now that you got it together and going on? Yeah, that's the reason I asked you was it's going to be televised in Johnson City. So you can see that I'm doing something productive and constructive. Well, now, i tell you what, we can get you a uh, DVD copy. It won't reach Johnson City. It stops off at Cookville. But we can get you a DVD, and you can take it up there and throw it in the tube. Well, I sure appreciate it. it. I sure yeah, appreciate we'll it. we'll give you one of those. All right. And uh, if, we, if there is one thing that you would think of that a parent 
or a, a young person. Let's talk about a young man. We've got three minutes to go. If there's one thing that you'd tell him not to do, a young man who's 14, 15 year old, not to do, what would be the one thing you'd say? Not to ever get yourself involved in criminal activity or allow your friends or your uh, 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 colleagues to influence you to do anything wrong. Oh, that's good. Because when you, when you commit crimes, you commit crimes against your own soul and the throne of God, first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then you are penalized by your society. And be responsible. What you're saying is you be responsible for your own behavior. You be responsible for your actions and your deeds. I went out lead to, uh, and I've told this on the story before, I went out to Metro, and, and the sheriff asked me to come out and talk to a group because a lot of my kids had grown up riding our buses and all, and he had several incarcerated. And they said, we'd like for you to come out and talk to them. So I said, get them all together. I can't come out there and make 20, 30 visits, you know, round them all up. So they round them up and got them in a the room. And I sat down, and we just had a great old-time Bible study like we used to have when there was little kids growing up, you know. You know. And so I asked them, I said, why are y'all here? Now, you know how to live right. You know how to make right decisions. You know how to set boundaries. Why are you here? 21 of them, I believe it was. They all said the same thing, peer pressure. They allowed their friends to trick them into making wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. And I said, y'all got to be kidding me. And I think two or three of these guys, you know, they got four or five, about five of them rough. I mean, you know, these old boys, they ain't afraid of nothing, the devil himself, you know. They, but yet they gave in and allowed their friends to make, uh, trick them into making wrong decisions or influence them making wrong decisions. Mothers, you need to teach your children to stand up who they are. My daddy always told me when I left the house, don't forget who you are. That's right. And that was good advice. It was good advice. Because I knew I had a name, and I knew I had a family that I need to stand up for. That's right. We ain't got but 30 seconds. I tell you what, Lee, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate being here. Did I treat you okay? You treat me absolutely marvelous. <laughs> I'm proud to get Thank to know you. you. Will you come back sometime and yeah, do another I will. show? Yeah, I will. I want you to stay out of jail, and I'm going to pray that you are successful with your life. Well, let me say this in the last five seconds. In order for an individual that's been incarcerated or somebody is continuously going to jail, the only way that you're going to stay out of jail is change your mindset. Change your mindset. That's it. When your we're mindset has changed, your thoughts are changed. You've got to come back and tell me because we're out of time. All right. All right. Change that mindset. Put the Lord first. Put the Lord Folks, first. Folks, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want to ask all of you to be praying for Lee, for his friends and the people he associates with, that he can lead them in a way that will help them to be what God wants them to be. Thank you. God bless. Brother, thank you. All right. Thank you, sir.